I've got a lot of things to do today. However, wifey said, no, you're going to, in between all the things you have to do, you've got to fire up the smoker. We're going to smoke some meat. Oh, man. You know, the price we pay for being capable males, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we're going to switch. She wants me to smoke two chickens, a pork roast, and a turkey breast. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. This is the uh, barbecue uh, chips I use, by the way. I get them at Walmart. They're much cheaper at Walmart than they are anywhere else, trust me. And I fill it up as full as I can get. I do not wet them. I found out that they work better. They smoke better if they're not wetted. Other people may disagree, but that's the way I see it. And, of course, I start out with water, hot water. And I spray the grills, each of the grills inside the smoker with some Pam of some kind. Keeps the uh, grills fairly clean. A little tip that uh, some of you may not have known about, or you already knew about it. It just took me forever to figure it out on my own. <laughs> the, this is the, the hole where the chips go. The chips go in this pot right here. And I found that you have to press down on this bar and that bar and this bar and that bar. You have to press it down. So the bottom of the chip holder actually sits on this element. These elements, you know, if there's a space so much as that right there uh, between the bottom of the chip holder and these elements, it just won't smoke very good. So I press it all the way down with my hand. So basically what I'm doing is, you know, I'm just kind of giving it one of those. So when I set the uh, chip holder in there, it sets right on the element, right down on it. And that, that way it gets all the heat. Well, there we go. Everything's inside. Now maybe I can get around to doing some of the things I need to do. Well, there's our version of a smoked pork roast. Oh, man, that thing. Let me smell that. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, I tell you what, I just want to slice it. The wifey cooked it for Christmas Eve. And, you know, she's wanting to know if I want a piece right now. And I'm doing everything I can to say no. We'll just wait till Christmas Eve. That smoker did a great job on that roast. Well, now that the roast is done, the pork roast, let's go ahead and open it up and see what the rest of the, uh, the turkey breast and the two chickens look like. Well, they're coming along nicely. Very nice. I like the color. The temperature is about 160 degrees inside our chicken there. Going to have to get a little bit hotter before I'm ready to, I'm ready to take them out and start eating them. I'll tell you what, while I'm using that electric uh, smoker, the old wheel on this electric, uh, this electric meter is going round and round. Look at that baby moving. Woo! <laughs> Wifey went down to the uh, local dollar store for a little while, and it's beginning, beginning to get dark. It's uh, a whole lot lighter in the camera than it actually is. So I think I'll check on our chicken and our turkey while she's gone one more time. Woo, boy! Well, that's not looking too bad. I think we got to go just a little while longer, especially on that turkey breast. That turkey breast doesn't quite look like it's ready. But I'll let her worry about that when she gets back. The chickens, I think maybe in another 15, 20 minutes should be good to go. And that's it for the chicken, the two chickens, and our turkey breast. She's going to go ahead and freeze these things up. I think we're going to eat one now, but the rest is going to be frozen up uh, for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I just got done laying a clear coat of paint on that uh, 1931 airline tuner. I'm going to have to flip it upside down later and put a second coat on, but I always like to tape off the blades, anything that's got any screws, uh, anything where anything is going to be soldered. Underneath there, there's some stuff that's going to be soldered also. I tape off the shaft, you know. It takes about, oops, man, goodness, good thing it was dry. It takes about 30 minutes to to do all the taping, and then I put some, I just take some newspaper strips and stick it down in there to cover this side, so I don't have to worry about the paint so much. And then, uh, that's about it. So all you have to do is just put on a nice thin coat. By the way, uh... My mentor, Brendan, I have still not heard a thing from him since his second uh, operations. I, I, I waited a long time before sending him an email because I wanted to make sure he was totally, you know, uh, healed up. 
and maybe on the mend and getting his strength back and everything. But finally, I sent him an email, and I said, uh, you know, how you doing? You know, folks are asking about you, that sort of thing. I have not yet got an answer. So I am once again in a, deep into the worried department. And that should finish it up. Nice clear coat. In order to finish the restoration, or actually to begin the electronic restoration of this airline uh, 6214 that I've been kind of piddling with, I needed a, uh, a terminal strip that would be, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe two and a half times as long as this, with, you know, with a whole bunch of uh, uh, soldering terminals on it. And so it would have to be fairly long, you know, maybe out to here. The problem was trying to find one at a decent price and trying to find one uh, by itself it was a little bit difficult. So uh, most people were selling, you know, two and three at a time. So what I have decided to do is I looked around on eBay and I found this little jewel here. Now this is kind of neat. I was kind of hoping it would be a little little larger, but unfortunately it wasn't. So what I'm going to do is split that right down the center. Well, there it is, split down the middle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a, uh, a sanding disc and smooth that up real good so it looks, you know, fairly decent, a whole lot better than it does now. <laughs> and when I finally put the two pieces together, they'll be butted together like so. And I'll have myself a nice long terminal strip, just what I wanted. I just used some uh, 600 grit uh, silicon carbide uh, paper, wet dry sandpaper, whatever you wanna call it, and uh, went over the the Heath kit a little scope case and made it nice and smooth. It was rough in a few spots, but it's really nice now. And uh, as soon as I wipe it all down and make sure it's fairly dust free, and doing real good, then we're going to go ahead and paint it with this Valspar color right here. It's not white. It almost matches the original. It's not white and it's not gray. It's about right in the middle. That's about the, almost exactly the original color. But of course, you know, go, trying to go by the cap. <laughs> And oftentimes isn't quite what it looks like, but it doesn't matter because this is what's going on. It this is a uh, primer, and uh, I think it's a primer and paint in one, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. <clears throat> no, it's called Azure Snow. Azure Snow. A little bit lighter. I guess this doesn't have the primer in it. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. In order to make this thing so I can spin it uh, while I'm painting and I don't want it to touch the table. What I did was took, you know, just a regular old milk jug, turned it upside down after I had cut it. That's what I, that's what I used for my evaporust soaking. I just turned it upside down, set a coffee can on it, and then we set this on top of here like so. And it's perfect. It does not touch the table, and I can spin it while I paint. Cheap, easy way. Well, here goes. Win, lose, or draw. Yeah, it's not too shabby. It's not white, but it's probably going to take a lot of paint to cover it, though. Man, alive. Well, there she is. Uh, what I'm going to do is let it dry for a couple of days. Then I'll give it a light sanding again with some 600 grit paper and put one last coat on it. And it'll be done. And that is almost identical to what it looked like when I first got it. All right, folks, it is time for you to view some of my incomparable genius as usual. What I've done, like I said, I cut that little old uh, terminal board in half and then I, you know, sanded it down on a disc sander and got them, you know, fairly nice size, equal all the way around. Now I have a long one. The problem is, you know, I can't mount this <clears throat> to the inside chassis of the radio and then stick components on it because you know, the metal is sticking through the back. And what's going to happen? Well, it's going to ground it out against the chassis. And I thought about that, and I said, you know, I wonder what I could put underneath there to keep that from happening. And I gave it a thought, gave it a thought, and finally I said, well, it's going to have to be something a lot sturdier than just a, you know, a piece of that thin plastic that I use for light diffusers and things like that, and it probably wouldn't work anyway. So what, I'm, what I came up with, I have some plastic, I have some plexiglass, and I cut the plexiglass the same size or thereabouts as the two terminal strips. 
Now what I'm going to do is mount that to that using <laughs> JB Quick. Yes, JB Quick, we're going to mount that on there. And before we do that though, we will rough the surface up using a little old moto tool and a little small grinding wheel. We will rough up the back part of the board, you know, down around this area here. I may not rough the entire thing up. I may only go like mount part of the way down or I might get carried away and do the whole thing on both of them. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> and then of course the top surface of the plexiglass. Then we'll mix up the JB weld and we will cement it on there. The reason I'm roughing it up is so we have a good gripping surface. So let's get that done. Well, there we go, and as expected, I got carried away on these. They just went from one end to the other. It made it real quick. I mean, the whole job took less than two minutes, okay? You just want to rough it up. Don't go hog wild with it. And now I'm going to apply the glue to the surface here, <clears throat> a little bit of glue on here, and then I'm just going to flip them over and put them in place. This stuff dries almost instantly, and we'll be in good shape. We are about ready to flip them over and put them where they belong. I used a blade of my knife, you know, after we mixed the uh, epoxy or the uh, JB Quick up on a big old piece of paper. I just scooped it up with the blade and just kind of went along there like that. And then I picked each one of these up separately and did it. You know, it doesn't have to be all that super duper uh, neat and all that. And even if some of it were to get squeezed up through these holes and wind up on the other side, it still wouldn't make any difference. Actually, it might help it... Uh, you know, might help it stick better, you know, because you'd have a little bit coming out of the other side. So, and that really doesn't matter, but it's, it's pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and get them in uh, place. Let them sit and see what happens. Well, there it is. Now I'll just let it sit there. I won't mess with it. I won't touch it. I won't do anything. We're just going to let it sit there until it dries. Well, it's been sanded down, and I'm fixing to put the final coat on it. By the way, it turns out that this Valspar is paint and primer. I hadn't even noticed it. I thought it said it when I bought it, and then I couldn't find it anymore because I kept looking down at the bottom down here. So let's go ahead and finish it up and get it done, and that'll be the end of this. When I got home last night from work, which was the 16th of December, Sitting on the table was a package that had come in the mail. And it turns out it came from one of our good subscribers named Brian up in Ohio. And I, I had no idea what it was. And I went ahead and opened it up and look what we have. It's, <laughs> I, I wish you guys would stop doing these things. You know, it just really just humbles me. Uh, I, I don't know what to say when I, when I get stuff like this, you know. Brian, well, I'll tell you what, I opened, I'm not going to open these. I'm not going to open these until Christmas. I'm going to go ahead and put these under the tree. It says, to John from Brian, to John from Brian. I'll tell you what, I, I don't know. Let, let, let's go ahead and take a look at the card here. He says, uh, Merry Christmas, John. Just a little something to let you know how much I enjoy watching your videos. I hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas. Happy New Year, Brian and Cheryl. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you two folks also. I greatly appreciate this, uh, and I it's not necessary, you know, you know, I'm beginning to wonder, maybe he's trying to bribe me into doing another restoration, another radio step-by-step -step restoration. <laughs> the problem, I'd love to do one, the problem is, I don't have anything new to show you folks, you know. You've seen it all, I've done it all, as far as I can tell. It'd be the same old thing over and over. It'd get awfully boring after a while. I'm not so sure it wouldn't be boring for just you. It would probably be just boring for me as well, you know, doing the same thing over, saying the same words over and over. I don't know. I do have a radio that was sent to me, oh, a while back, maybe last year, maybe a, little, maybe a year and a half ago by Old Radio Al. It's still sitting in my shed, still sitting in the box, and it does need restoration. So, which, which kind of brings up at this point, where is old Radio Al? I haven't seen him in a long time. Al, get back on the video, you know, circuit. Let, let's see you once in a while. Don't just disappear completely. Anyway, I might, after winter time, I've got a couple of winter projects I'm doing right now. After winter, I might just drag out that, that radio that uh, 
old radio Al sent me and start tearing it apart and see maybe, maybe we can do something I don't know maybe who knows you know <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Brian and Cheryl, thank you very much. It was very kind of you, very thoughtful of you. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to put this under the tree, and I'm going to actually film opening it up. How's that? We'll put that in a future video, okay? So, we all know what that means. Shout out to Brian and Cheryl. Speaking of Christmas presents, this is what wifey got me. She got me a little early, a couple of early Christmas presents. I just love her to death. This is a uh, our Ham Radio Club winter jacket. Faulkner County Amateur Radio Club. And, of course, my name and call sign. And it's got the hood and, and the lining on the inside. And brand spanking new. I just love it. It's, it's great. Nice and thick and nice and heavy. Not super thick, but, you know, a good winter jacket, you know. And then she got me, and, of course, on the back. Yeah, look what's on the back of this sucker. They got a big old, big old jobby on the back. I'll tell you what, they'll know we've come and gone, I guess. <laughs> and then she got me the lightweight spring and fall jacket. Same thing. Oh, man. And, again, it has the... Uh, the club logo on the back. Isn't that cool? I have to smoke another pork roast on Sunday. Today's Friday, so I gotta get this thing cleaned up from all that meat we smoked earlier. Holy mackerel, this thing was just a terrible mess. And for those of you who have never owned one of these things, all you have to do after you get it, you know, I spray it down, all of the racks down with the PAM or some other kind of non-stick stuff. And when it's all done, you're going to have a whole lot of smoke and crap and everything in here. And all you have to do is take a wet rag and, and clean it. You can see a lot of it just comes right off. Just like so. It will come off. You just got to spend a little time with it, that's all. And since I have nothing else to do today, what the heck, you know? <laughs> just go ahead and wipe it down, take your time. And believe it or not, it will come fairly clean. Let's see if I can wipe off some right here in the middle to kind of give you an idea. See there? Just a damp rag is all it takes. You can't use soap on it. So that's what I'm going to do. The bottom is always the hardest part, but, you know, and it won't come, you know, very clean. But you do the best you can, and you put your tinfoil back on. This was covered with tinfoil, believe it or not. Well, it's about as clean as she's going to get. We're all ready to go for Sunday. And, uh, you know, some people, they don't even bother cleaning out these smokers. They just keep cooking them, you know, just the way they are. Not me. And I'll tell you why. I've had food poisoning. And the full week I spent in the hospital with it was not fun at all. No, no. Uh, it was the first time I ever got a catheter. No, it was not fun. I think we'll go ahead and wrap this video up with the old oscilloscope. And uh, as you can see, I've done all the necessary work uh, waiting for the tubes to come in from Bob uh, Dobush at Find a Tube. Replaced all the old capacitors and put new film caps in changed out the electrolytics and I removed the can completely because I, I used larger voltage caps and they wouldn't fit inside the can. I wasn't going to order a whole bunch of brand new electrolytics just so I could fit them inside that can. I just went ahead and mounted them like that. They're sturdy enough. I might take a little uh, toilet paper roll and stick down over there. I don't know. And glue it in place. That'll help it. Anyway, I do have a question for those who might be a little more familiar with something than I am, because I'm not familiar with it at all. Let me pull this, uh, you see this knob right here? They all work okay. Here's another one, and here's another one up here. If I pull that thing, look, look at here, it pulls right out. Is it supposed to do that? I don't understand that at all. And they fit right in that slot. Let me zoom in here. I've never seen knobs like that. Are they supposed to come out of there like that? Are they supposed to be <laughs> permanently in there? Same with this one. Look at that. It pulls right out. I don't understand that at all. Anybody can fill me in on... Uh, now, this one here is missing it completely. Now, these have been hacksawed off by somebody at some point in the past. They're really bad, uh, bad job at that. And this one here pulls out, too. So, if somebody knows, fill me in. We're ready to fire this baby up. As soon as I put that tube uh, 
from the box that uh, Bob Dobish sent me. He did a great job in packing, by the way, as usual. I'll go ahead and put that tube in over there, and we will fire this baby up, which will, which will happen next time. So until then, anybody have an answer on the knobs, let me know. This is John. One more thing uh, before we wrap it up. You remember the last mishmash video uh, when I first used uh, the evapo rust? I took that small piece of metal and I put down in there. It was real rusty and I let it set for like three or four days. It took the rust completely off, if you remember, and I decided to go ahead and let it soak for a couple more days. I just went ahead and threw it right back in another container. And let's, I'm, I'm going to look at it and see how it turned out. Ooh. Wow. Holy mackerel. Looky there. <laughs>